For the past 15 years, Apple's been slugging it out with a number of different Android manufacturers to compete for your hard-earned cash in the smartphone market. For most people, the choice generally comes down to Apple or Samsung. But if one thing has become increasingly clear over the past couple of years is that Samsung isn't alone in this market, even if HTC and LG, old favourites, are no longer here. There's been a rise of Chinese manufacturers over the past couple of years, and one of those is Oppo. Its latest flagship, the Find X5 Pro, is a stellar smartphone. So how does it compare to Apple's best, and which one deserves your hard-earned money? I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and I'll explain all in this video, and hopefully help you to decide. If you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell, and that way you won't miss any more of our uploads. In the age of smartphones all essentially being that same rectangle slab of glass, it's nice to see two phones that look so different to each other. Whether you look at them from the front or the back, there's no way you'll confuse them. That's even more true if you pick them up and hold them, for a few reasons. Firstly, the Oppo is considerably lighter than the iPhone, and that's partly down to the materials used. Where the iPhone has a heavier stainless steel frame, Oppo has gone with aluminium. And secondly, there's the shape. Apple's straight lines and flat edges means it doesn't have the same comfortable feel of the Oppo, which has curves towards the edges on both front and the back. And that helps what is a large phone feel a bit more palm friendly. And then there's the texture. Apple's iPhone has that frosted soft matte glass on the back which feels smooth, where the Oppo features a ceramic back which is glossy and shiny. The Oppo then is the one that's more likely to slide off things and pick up fingerprints really easily, especially in this black finish iPhone doesn't really show fingerprints at all, except on those stainless steel edges. Size-wise, they're similar, but Oppo's phone is a few millimetres narrower than the iPhone, despite being taller and a bit thicker. And that helps it feel more comfortable too when combined with those aforementioned curves. And while both feature the same IP68 water and dust resistance, Apple claims its phone can survive at depths up to 6 meters versus 1.5 meters on the Oppo. However, with its ceramic back, the Find X5 Pro should prove more resistant to everyday scrapes and bangs than the iPhone, while the steel frame does make the iPhone overall a bit more sturdy and rigid. On a more superficial level, colors. The iPhone has more of them. It comes in silver, graphite, gold, and Sierra blue, plus the new alpine green. And at the moment, Oppo is just black or white. Onto the displays, and there's obviously some difference here. Spec-wise, Oppo has a more pixel-dense display, but there's not a huge difference to the eye. Both are sharp displays, and both have similar peak brightnesses too. Oppo at 1300 nits, and iPhone at 1200. That also means they both support various standards of HDR. Oppo supports HDR10+, iPhone is HDR10, and Dolby Vision. They're both sharp, both with great dynamic range with deep blacks and bright spots that don't overexpose or lose detail, but where they differ, as we find with cameras later, is mostly in colour, temperature, and saturation. In its default setting, the iPhone tends to have a cleaner, cooler look than the Oppo for any content. So white looks pure white, where the Oppo tends to have a slightly warmer appearance. But this is with both of their adaptive temperature modes switched off. With Nature Tone enabled on Oppo and True Tone on iPhone, the difference is mostly that the Oppo is slightly more saturated, at least with its default vivid mode selected. The thing about Oppo, however, is that it gives you the option to change this calibration, so you can tune the colors more to your liking. The display color mode lets you switch between vivid, natural, and a couple of so-called pro modes. So if you want less color saturation, you can choose natural, and then you get less of that visual pop. With the natural mode selected, it's very difficult to see any significant difference between the colors on either phone. They're remarkably similar. From a media standpoint, they both offer stereo sound too, but the iPhone to our ears is a bit better. You get a bit more bass and mids than on the Oppo, so it sounds a lot more full. Oppo, by comparison, is a tiny bit harsher and emptier. Then there's the fact that the iPhone screen is flatter, so it doesn't curve any content at the edges. But then there's that big notch that cuts into the space at the top, where Oppo's little punch hole camera doesn't distract quite as much when you want full screen content. The notch, however, does mean you get Face ID, which is still a very convenient and easy way to unlock the phone throughout the day. The in-display fingerprint sensor in the Oppo works well, but it's not as convenient as Face ID unless you're wearing a mask. The interesting thing about performance and battery life in particular is that these two phones are equally strong with my own personal usage. Usually with the maxed sized iPhone models, I'd see it comfortably outlast pretty much any Android phone. But with Oppo's various optimizations, that's not how it played out here. With two or three hours of screen time a day, mostly for social media and messaging, I can get both phones to last about two days. 
or more technically about 36 hours. That's to say, they end the first day with about half of the battery left over. Now it is worth noting here, to clarify, I don't really use Facebook and don't have it installed. I also don't live in a 5G area, and both of those can be quite big battery drains. So if you're a heavier user, or you do have Facebook and use that quite a lot, or you do live in a 5G area, you're probably not going to get two days from either phone. Now, speed and performance wise, they're similar too. Any game I want to play, they load them quickly. And thanks to those 120 Hertz displays, they feel quick and responsive to touch gestures regardless of whether I'm gaming or just flitting around the interface and switching apps. Where the Oppo smokes the iPhone is in battery refill speeds. With its 80 watt charger, it can easily refill the entire battery in just over half an hour. In about the same time, you'll only get about half the battery full on the iPhone. What's more, you can use a 50 watt wireless Air VOOC charger, and it can fill up the entire battery in about 50 minutes. MagSafe wireless charging at just 15 watts is nowhere near that speedy. But then if you charge overnight, that's not likely a concern. Both phones have built-in optimization to stop them charging too fast at night time as well, and that helps your battery last longer. So onto cameras, and number-wise, they are quite different. In that Oppo's primary and ultra-wide both use the same 50 megapixel sensor, and there's a zoom camera with a 13 megapixel sensor. iPhone, like Oppo, has three cameras, each uses 12 megapixels, and like Oppo, it has a primary, ultra-wide, and zoom. Except there's a big difference in that the zoom is three times optical versus two times on the Oppo. And that difference is something you can definitely experience when out shooting. The extra focal length means you can zoom in that bit closer to what you're shooting. And almost as important, we found Oppo's was a bit more fiddly to adjust and switch between those modes. End results were slightly different. Shooting outside in bright daylight with the main cameras, the results were similar but give quite vivid results with plenty of pop and oversaturated blue skies on both phones. The sense I got a lot of the time was that the Oppo's color balance tends to shift a little more towards the warmer, yellower feel, where the iPhone was a lot more neutral and cool. But that slightly warm effect in the Oppo made the images seem a bit more natural at times. The only real downside was that the ultra-wide didn't always look as good on the Oppo as its primary camera, often failing to balance the colors and the highlights and the shadows and the brightness in the same way, despite having the same sensor. Shooting close-ups, the Oppo was better at automatically creating that background blur, giving those close-ups more of a sense of depth. And when using the zoom, the iPhone gets you closer, but its results were often really contrast heavy and looked artificial and completely unnatural compared to the Oppo. Now at night time, they can both shoot good shots and get lots of light in using the night mode. Here again, Oppo often lifts more light out of the darker shadowed areas and looks more natural with the iPhone creating this dark crushed area in the background with a cooler look and sometimes overexposing the bright areas. It's just not as balanced as Oppo's a lot of the time. Video wise, they're both very similar and both offer stabilization in the main cameras. So if you shoot while walking or using them handheld, you can get decent smooth footage from the two phones. Now in the end, when comparing everything, there's not a massive amount of difference in hardware performance when you're looking at these two phones side by side. Whether you're looking at hardware performance, cameras, or even the price, they are two top phones and they'll cost you what you'd expect a top flagship to cost. Saying that, in the UK you get a lot more storage on the Oppo than on the entry-level iPhone. The model available here has 256 gigabytes versus 128 on the entry iPhone. Now for the first time comparing two high-end phones, I'm a little bit stuck. From a display perspective, they can be very similar, and even from performance and battery, they are very similar. So really, it comes down to very small details. Personally, I preferred the camera results from the Oppo, so I'd choose that for the camera. I also prefer the more comfortable feel of the design as well. It also charges really quickly, which is a lifesaver at times when I've forgotten to put it on charge. Still, Apple's ecosystem is very strong. There's a lot of convenience in owning an iPhone, and it is a very strong performer across every category. Let us know which one you think you're going to go for. Will you go for the brand new Oppo Find X5 Pro and see what that's like versus the usual Samsung and Apple? Or will you go with a tried and tested iPhone? Let me know in the comments below or get me on social media. I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.